Good evening. Welcome back to another episode of Please Call Me Crazy, brought to you by Free People Radio and powered by our favorite sponsor, TireGit.com. That's TireGit.com. You have to buy tires from somebody. You might as well buy them from us, help fund the movement, help support the movement. We believe in the freedom of movement, and that's exactly what the establishment wants to take from you now. I'm your host, Royce White, here with my trusted co-host of the Hebrews edition, Professor Penn. Good evening. Have him back in the studio for a third family and friends edition in a row. Not even really a family and friends edition. Well, it's family and friends, so please call me crazy until we until we kickstart the Hebrews channel. I'm I'm excited about the Hebrews channel because I really like the artwork for the Hebrews channel. We may we may have to tease the Hebrews artwork for tonight's episode. Um I think we'll do that. I think we'll use the Hebrews uh the Hebrews artwork for the thumbnail just to tease uh, what, what what's to come in the future. We got great art and design to our uh, Hebrews podcast. Other housekeeping before we get started. Our Podbean account is fixed, so all the audio distribution should be back to normal. I uploaded about six of the seven uh, six of the seven backlogged episodes, uh, and we're gonna do Professor Pens as well. So if you follow on the audio platforms and you've been bummed out because we didn't get our episodes up uh, as of the last, I don't know, 17 to 20 days, I would, would assume since February 2nd, uh, we, we now have that problem solved. So, uh, good, good tiding there. Um, Wait, could I, could I do a little, uh, housekeeping myself there, okay, sir? For sure. Okay. So next Tuesday night, February 27th is the Minnesota state caucuses. Yes. So instead of us uh, posting up a Professor Penn podcast next Tuesday, the 27th, we're going to post up just one time on Monday, the 26th, because I will be involved in the process of self-governance. And if you're hearing this broadcast and you live in Minnesota, I strongly request and urge you to find out where your caucus is taking place. It will start in the early evening. It takes about an hour. Please go. Please participate. Get off the couch, get off the bench, get in the game, and take a stake in this table. We need you, and it's an opportunity to become a Minnesota State Convention delegate so you will have a say in the future of the Republican Party of Minnesota, how it's governed, who leads it, and who it endorses to be its candidates in the 2024 election cycle. So again, the Professor Penn podcast will move one time from Tuesday the 27th, caucus night, to Monday the 26th. I look forward to seeing you in the live chat. Okay, housekeeping is done. Thank you for that uh, spot, Mr. Royce White. Oh, that was great. Uh, nothing more important than caucuses coming up this week. Um, Got to get involved in the process. Can't really complain unless you're involved. I'm running for United States Senate for that very reason. Uh, but but I've definitely uh, been in a number of political processes, gatherings, proceedings, and so on and so forth, where you really get a good good look at the old adage of politics is done by those who show up. It really is done by those who show up. We've been in the room when when they've taken a, a hand count or, or a nay, yay, um, that split 115 to 90, 120 to 90 or so. I mean, just a handful of people, a dozen, a couple dozen people split. And people forget when you got to vote, you know, is 130 people to 100 people is really a 15 person difference. Swing. There's a 15 person swing vote, uh, assuming that the people who voted could be swung, which is why it's also important to continue to minister, because what's more obvious than ever is there are people out there who really have no fucking idea what's going on in the world around them. They have no fucking clue. I mean, it just really it really puts the Matrix back into the, the Matrix, the movie, and the story, which was screenplay written by a black woman. Did you see that? Yes. You know, she, yeah, yeah. She's a hitter. We, I got to try and find her and get her on the podcast. Hopefully she's still she's living. She's probably living in a bunker. Yeah, pff, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Unless, unless they beamed her up Scotty already. <laughs> she, she knew a little bit too much. Um, shit, now I'm going to get a bunch of alien flat earth comments in the, in the, in the comments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, you know, it, it really puts in perspective in the sense that, you know, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's simulation, whatever it is, the, the, the point is people 
have a sort of NPC, we call it, in the gaming community is non-playable characters uh-huh. in video games, they're NPCs. People, a lot of people do have a sort of NPC uh, worldview. And whether it's done through the brainwashing of, of mainstream media or entertainment, Hollywood, or whether it's done by music or, or the education, so whatever it is, uh, you know, it's out there. It, it really is. And it, it, it's deep. You know, it's, uh, I, let, let's start here. Because there's no, no better place than right here. Mark Levin. We're going to start with Mark Levin. Because I really wasn't aware. I, I knew who Mark Levin was loosely. But I really wasn't aware of him, you know, like, like that until we met, and then we started to talk, and then I looked into, you know, I looked into him a little bit more after you mentioned some things. You were one of the first people who put Mark Levin on my radar, so to speak, in, in terms of who he really was, you know, not not who he's portrayed to be. Um, so, you know, I I went after him because obviously he still supports the war in Ukraine and. I mean, he's all in. And then he has the audacity to flippantly ask us all the question, all the American people the question, like, well, are, is everybody okay with this? Uh, is everybody okay with, with Ukraine losing their footing and then P- Putin potentially eyeing Romania, Poland, and, and the Balkan states? And my response to him was, we don't give a fuck about Poland or the Balkan states or Romania. The same way we don't give a fuck about the Sudan or... The Suez. Or the Suez or, or Egypt or, or the Ivory Coast or, or any of that shit. I mean, America first means America first. Now, it's not to say we can't have some relationship with these countries, uh, but but obviously the, the priorities are lopsided and they have been for a long time. And Mark Levin was at the, at the, at the helm of that in many ways. He, was, he, pl- he played a very intimate role working in the Reagan administration. I mean, people's love for Reagan is, is so strange. Let, let's start with Mark Levin. I mean, people actually, they're, they're, I, I have no clue how there's such a widespread um, love for Mark Levin and the conservative movement. It really is one of the greatest diagnoses of, uh, of, of the times in America. I mean, I know who Mika Brzezinski is. I know who Don Lemon was. I know who Van Jones is. I know who Joy Ann Reed is. I know who Joy Behart is. I know who Megan McCain is. But you're talking about people who actually believe in the Constitution have been wooed by by Mark Levin, and they can't. And, and you know, I had a guy say, "Look, uh, online, I, I disagree with them on the Ukraine 100 percent." I read that. I disagree with them 100 percent. But there are no buts, motherfucker. There are no motherfucking buts when it comes to the war in Ukraine. But this, but that, but nothing. Either you're America first, which means border, debt, forever wars, and the forever wars may be the biggest and most important piece of that. Honestly, I mean, stopping the forever wars, not the other way around. The neocons seem to think that the forever wars is the most important piece to to the prosperity of the country. That's why they call it Operation Prosperity Guardian, right? The border is the most pretty honest, isn't it? The border is the most crisis piece, but stopping the forever wars is maybe the most important thing overall. Um, and and we could stop this war. I mean, from what Vladimir Putin said, and it, and even if he's lying, it's incumbent upon our leadership in America to make a public attempt to call his bluff. So that if he is lying and he doesn't really want peace, then his people and everybody else in the international community get a chance to see that that he's not willing to negotiate a peace, honestly. And we haven't done that. There's been no significant sign. I watch the news every day. You watch the news every day. There's been no significant signs that this administration or the rest of the international community that's on this side of the the, the, the table um, is has made any real efforts to, to broker a peace. Whoa, whoa, slow, slow, slow. Go ahead. United Nations had a resolution just this week to demand a truce in the Gaza. Mm -hmm. The United States was the only country that voted against it and subverted that effort. It was a 13-1 vote, and the United States sided with continuing the war. So when you talk about— Wait, 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 wait. Say it again. Repeat it for the NPCs. There was a resolution, and I'm not— clear about all the details. There was a resolution. There was 14 voting countries. 13 countries voted to impose a truce in the Gaza. The United States voted against it. It must have been a uh, 
I mean, I don't know. We should probably look it up while we're on here. But the impulse to continue fighting is coming from we the people, the people that we elect, the people that we listen to. Mm -hmm. Going back to Mark Levin. Mark Levin, you know, I, I told you, you know, I, I never get to see you. So good morning. It's nice morning. to see you. Yeah, good morning. I told you when we were walking in the studio this morning how angry I am because of spending time in social media and reading what people post. The, the whole country is based on this business model of empire. And I'm, okay, great. Like you say, NPC. There's a lot of people that are very aware of it and are completely bought into it. Their identity is based on military prowess and prosperity that's based on our military prowess. And the whole scam is about this military. That's why the GDP keeps expanding. That's why we keep having deficit spending. Mm. Everything that the um, NATO countries do, everything that we talk about is what is the percentage of military spending of your GDP. So we have a $25 trillion GDP. We're spending about 3.69% of our GDP on military. It's about $900 billion, and that's a BS story because it doesn't count the, you know, research funding and the black bag funding. And I mean, it's probably two and a half, three trillion is going into it when you total it all up. We're spending all this money to support the military. So here's how bad it is. This is why I'm pissed. I, I'm looking and I got a community note. I, I put this post up about Japan. Japan in this gap where there's no military funding coming from our Congress because a small group of resistors of, when you listen to the left, crazies, they just label them every, that'd be me. I'm a crazy, I'm a traitor, I'm this, I'm that. The people that are not uh Voting for this already, the Senate already passed this bill. It's mm -hmm. $90 billion for Ukraine, Taiwan, and, and Israel. I posted, you know, constantly about in the endless war, and somebody put community notes in. This is how brazen these people are. That the money that's appropriated for the Ukraine is recycled back into U.S. companies. Yeah. And... They are making a big deal about the Japanese. The Japanese, oh, we can't get in the Japan. And they're already, they're over in Asia, and they, they threw in $12 billion. And they're going, even the Japanese are supporting the Ukrainians. Like we're you know, the Japanese, there's a company called Mitsubishi. Those of us who know our history, and we all need to, there's a, a fighter plane called the Mitsubishi Zero. And those were the planes that bombed the boys that were in Pearl Harbor and sent about 3,500 of them to their death on December 7th, 1941. That was the Mitsubishi company. Raytheon, Raytheon, our U.S. corporation, which builds the Patriot missile battery, which is so effective in shooting down Russian airplanes, licensed Mitsubishi because what we don't realize is our arms industry is globalized. It's a global supply chain. It's a global supply chain. It's a vulnerable supply chain. They licensed Raytheon, licensed Mitsubishi to build Patriot missile batteries. Right. So the <laughs> Japanese government gives the Ukrainians $12 billion. The Ukrainian government gives the $12 billion back to Mitsubishi. I'm sure they take off a billion for carrion charges, my boy, for those of us that know the uh, uh, great Humphrey Bogart movies of the 40s. Uh, and they make all that money who knows what the profit is? Could be 100%. And the Japanese taxpayers fund this thing, and the Japanese are broke. So that's this continuous expansion of the money supply, and the wealth of the people is being transferred to a very small group of stockholders. And the cost of doing business is death. That is the business model of the United States of America. It's got nothing to do with Ukrainian borders, Ukrainian people, Putin. It's a business. I'm a I'm really angry about it because okay. when you see, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm I I, I don't want to build my house on sand. Mm -hmm. I love this country. I love the documents that it was founded upon. 
mm-hmm. and to pervert rights that are granted to me by a creator. Mm-hmm. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and self-governance. To pursue, to, to pervert that into an empire that exists solely to fund a killing machine, and then they blame the Russians for having a killing machine. Well, of course they have to. And it's them too. And it's the Germans, and it's the Israelis. The whole world has built its economy around killing people. What does that make us as people? Murderers. And murdered. Mm-hmm. It makes us into those copper top batteries, a la the Matrix that you referenced at the top of the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I'm really angry about it because when you see it, and then there's all, oh, the stock market's at an all-time high. Well, of course it is. They put $1.59 trillion of funny money into the stock market this year, deficit spending. They're just expanding a balloon, and they think they can expand it forever, and it's been going on for a very long time. That would be since 1913. So this has been working for a very, very long time. I'm sorry I'm going to quiet down and let you continue (laughs) because I'll just take all the time up because I'm so angry. No, go ahead. Keep going. There's righteous indignation Mm -hmm. when a citizen understands that their life is being used in pursuit of death. And what does that mean from a spiritual perspective? What does it mean? So you're either an NPC. I like that. Either, you're either not paying attention or you're on one side of the football or the other. Now, I think from the history of time, going back to your original question, I think about 10% on each side of the football have always been the, one, the ones that drive the dialogue, and there's always been 80% in the middle that really don't want to pay attention. I think this goes back to the way back. Yeah. But there's 10% of activists, and in those activist cores, on both sides is a small group of, let's say, intelligentsia or thought leaders, which is what we're trying to do here at Free People Radio. We're trying to lead a new kind of politics. And I want to say this because it is caucus night coming up. We're doing this to form a movement. But I also want to support what Royce said in our previous Hebrews installment. Both of us are doing this for our own salvation. Because the awareness that you have when you're actually on the field playing, you recognize, I am recognized. I want to, I'm going to make an I statement. I am, why my anger? I am recognizing that most people don't want to deal with this. And there's a lot of people that are dealing with it by putting community notes in that justify the killing of people because it's good for the economy. You know, there's, there's not a lot you can do with that. I mean, it, there's this beautiful uh, movie in the movie theaters right now about Bob Marley's life. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I hear it's got great reviews. Yeah, I, I, heard love, so. I heard that I, too. I love Bob Marley, and he used to sing this song, Total Destruction is the Only Solution. And when I first heard it, I was in my 20s, and I thought, wow, I really like this guy. Why is he singing like this? But over the course of time, one might come to the conclusion that people are so hopelessly and utterly dependent on the system, a la the matrix, that you have to be very careful with them. They don't want to wake up, like Cypher, who wants to go back into the system mm-hmm. because, you know, if you Like were, the Hebrews who, they took, who, who Moses brought out of Egypt. Monday night, I'm going to read that. Mm. My, if you come to the Professor Penn podcast... Who wanted to go back into captivity. You know, there's a great story... Um, to have slavery is better to have the un, the mystery of the unknown. And Why did you bring us up out mm-hmm. of, they called Egypt the land flowing with milk and honey to die here in this desert, and who made you the boss? It was very mafia. And Moses said, you know, we're going to do a test now. We're going to see who's really right and who's wrong here. If these people die a natural death, you will know that I, Moses, is an imposter. But if the desert opens its mouth and swallows them whole, you'll know that they were insolent and arrogant and rebelled against God. And guess what happened? And as a Jewish man, this shit gets down in your blood because you start hearing this when you're five years old. And you realize that there's a price for sin, right? And still you sin. That's why there's Christ. And the, 
desert opened and swallowed Dathan and 250 of his gang members and all their women and their kids and their tents and their possessions down into the ocean, down into the desert they went. And if you're Jewish, hey, you remember that story. That's why, you know, Jews don't like to. A, lo- a large sinkhole. It's a large sinkhole. If you're really a believer, <laughs> you really understand that there's a price to be paid. Or quicksand. Could have been quicksand. Well, if you want to take a rational explanation for it, there's a lot of explanations for it, for sure. Well, I mean, you know, people will do that, and they'll act like, well, that's that's a really far-fetched story. It's like, not really, from a from a rational standpoint. Oh, the desert will swallow your ass up, Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. There's big sinkholes and quicksand out there in the vast Sinai. Thank you for that. Which they're trying to push the Palestinians into now. They're doing a great job of it. Absolutely, yeah. It's so, got a lot of people Some of them will there. find out real quick that it was much better in Israel, I guess, Gaza. Yeah? No? Well, uh, we have a lot of people pushing. That's a great argument. Let's, 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 let's. Fi- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Producer. I don't mean to laugh at war and, uh, you know, the, the things, the, the, the tragedies and conflicts that people have, but you almost, you almost have to because it means at that, that level where, there has to be some levity, and part of the problem with our leadership is they have no real sense of 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 of, of gallows humor, uh, of of you know, leadership. I mean, leadership. Sometimes you got to know when to press the button, pre- charge, and go forward. And sometimes you got to know how to, you know, <laughs> smooth things over. But you know, it, it, this is an interesting question in general about uh, slavery and and you know, being lorded over. And, and what it really means to be free, right? And to, to your point about the, the, the neocons and, and other... Uh, Back to Mark Levin. NPCs, you know, not Mark Levin. Mark Levin, he knows what he's saying, but a lot of the people who follow them obviously have no clue what they're, what they're listening to. Um, no, you know what, Royce? They're boomers. They're boomers. Well, that's what I mean. They have no they, clue. No, no, they know. And I'll tell you I what... I don't think they know. They know. No, they don't. They know, and I'll tell you what they know. Okay. That's why I'm angry. Mm. All they care about is that their 401k is getting bigger. And the Biden administration and these people on Morning Joe are telling people on their shows, hey, life's good. Look at your 401k. Look at how much money you're making. And that's all they care about. Really? Oh, I'll play the clip. I am playing the clip on well, Monday. Well, I feel I feel much better about motherfucking these cucks then. But <laughs> you, you, honestly, if that's really what it that is, is the, then, no, the then boom, fuck these people. Yeah. Honestly, fuck you, people. If you're more worried about your four hundred one k than you are the, the 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 freedom and security and and sovereignty of the of of the nation, then and don't then, and then, then don't those, tell me you're a patriot. Then then don't be don't, don't be Mark Levin and talk about the cons. Don't wrap yourself in the Constitution. Don't wrap don't wrap yourself in the cloth of faith. Right. When the two things that define your life is how much money you have, and the military prowess of the United States. When those planes fly over those stadiums, people's identities are tied up. I had this guy roll on. But my me. point was, my point was that um. What does it mean to be free? I mean, that's that's a serious question we got to ask now. Just back to your point with these people, um, they mistake materialism for freedom. It's a grave error. It's a grave spiritual error, but it's a grave practical error too. Error, you know. And so, the the, the if if and if you ever been to Gaza, I mean, if you ever see the pictures of Gaza, and they call it an open air prison, which Technically, it, it is. It was. It, it, is. it is. Well, well it was. Yeah. Now it's a now it's it a was. rubble pile. Um, but it was pretty posh in some places too, right? For certain people, relatively, right, yeah, right. But those people still rejected whatever modernity and and whatever uh, sense of uh, uh, gratitude that others believe they should have for that life for that prosperity and it's an important thing across history same as the the hebrews who came out of israel in the in the exodus is you know a lot of people could look look at your life here in, in beautiful egypt beautiful modern they did they wanted to uh, go back extraterrestrial uh, uh, aided in in building uh, uh egypt 
The pyramids. Yeah. We still don't know how those fucking pyramids were built. That that. Well, the Jews know. Well, yeah. Okay, but I'm saying, do you do they know? Oh, how that, how they build it? Did you? Yeah, they, well, not how, but we know who did the work. Well, but, no, I mean, how did they do it? I. You know what? They had master masons. They said it's a cover story that the Jews built it. Or who's they? I, I mean, they, they. Well, people who believe in extraterrestrial. Great. Read the Bible. Well, there's I an mean, oral even tradition. If, there's an oral tradition. Even if the even if the Hebrews were slaves in general, doesn't mean that they had the capacity to build those pyramids the way they were built. I'm just gonna say that. I mean, laser cut precision, and fucking six thousand BC. Give me a break. I don't care how many Jews and Egyptians you get together. That's a tall. That's a tall order. That's starting to sound like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> A Jew and an Egyptian went in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Who's driving? Who's driving? The slave driver. <laughs> an, a, an ET. Oh God! I'm going to get all types of ET. Well, you know, if they if they dug ET comments, if they dug up our society after six thousand years, people would say, because you know, there's a barbarism associated with the culture and the civilization disappearing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't even have. I have no personal relationship with that part of the story we have an oral tradition that has been handed down father to son for thousands of years mm -hmm. telling the story of the slavery in egypt and it's a very timeless story in the sense that when that story is told which is told annually which actually has a sidebar the last supper was christ telling that story to the disciples how important it was in the way the story is written Every person is supposed to project themselves into slavery and believe that they themselves were personally redeemed by God himself. Were saved. Saved and from redeemed the captivity. From, from the captivity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's such a powerful uh, organizing principle of not the anti-Jews who reject the story, but of the people that have faith. It's the direct line of, Abraham to Moses to King David to Christ. It's that the line of the the salvation of the people. So I don't I don't get into the extraterrestrial part of it because I'm actually in the I'm a slave part of it. Man, well, that makes us Hebrews. That's well, that's I mean, the Hebrew the, tie. But the, the two things can be true at once, and that's the, you know that's the next level of 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 dealing with tradition and history that we. I mean, these are the same people that that can't deal with the the fact that Reagan helped usher in a security state. They can't, they can't say the th two things simultaneously. Yeah, the Hebrews were slaves by tradition at the time in the area. Doesn't mean ETs didn't help them finish those pyramids. That's, there, yes, that's correct. There's some shit going on there. But, but there's some I, shit going I, was, on. I was down in the slavery wing. We weren't looking up at who was building the pyramids. We were just getting whipped. Well, true. I feel that. Well, true. Okay, I feel that. Yeah, but there are people, uh, again, regardless, there are things taking place that now, Looking, looking forward, we're gonna have to deal with the full scope of things. Well, maybe, maybe God came and freed us from the uh, extraterrestrials. It's possible. I, I'm not even saying it's. I'm not even saying I believe in the ext extraterrestrials. What I'm saying is there is some level of technology going on here across history that is either unknown to us or being kept from us. That much is almost obvious, and I don't know what exactly. That is, because that's not my line of country. I'm just saying it's worth. Anytime you mention Egypt, it's worth it to mention that we still don't know how those fucking pyramids were built. Okay, we got a lot of we got a lot of opinions and and you know factual evidence about this. That let's not forget that the biggest structures eruct, erected in that place have very very little scientific consensus, which is odd. I mean, that's just odd. In fact, there's more scientific consensus about the culture and the, the society, the way it was built, and the slavery than there is the, well, the actual infrastructure and architecture, which is strange, you're right? You're bringing up a very interesting slant on this. It makes me think about, like, for example, the 10 plagues. I just say that to say that in this particular, in this particular example, there's actually more scientific consensus and evidence about what comes out of the Bible than what comes out of the physical material that you can see which is 
a fucking catch twenty two for the, well, for how the about mainstream scientific s- community. Splitting the Red Sea is kind of a question mark. For example, I mean, maybe the whole thing was extraterrestrial because it says that God Himself, not an angel, not a seraph, came and rescued the mm-hmm. people. God Himself, and it actually traveled with the Jews through Sinai. You know, that's kind. Of, if you look at it from you remove the religious tradition and the cultural history as it's told within the tradition, that's pretty spooky. It's intense. Very spooky. Not spooky. I'd like to I'd like to have been there. But come to say we'll maybe it, not, because the only people who made it into the promised land were the Joshua and Caleb. People who had forgotten what it was like no, to be the in only Egypt, two, right? Only two. Right. Joshua and Caleb, the ones that went and spied out the land, everybody else died because they took with them a slave consciousness and they were arrogant and insolent. In a bunch of them explain wanted to go that. back. Explain that story as it's told in the in the in the in the Hebrew tradition. Well, I don't know. We even want to call it the Hebrew tradition. Is not the New Testament and the Old Testament the Testament? I I don't really understand that from the Catholic perspective. It's the he, it's it's a Hebrew tradition. Is he, just, it is. They were Hebrews. I mean, we're talking about the Exodus. Well, and you know, it's safe to say they were. So Hebrews. Christ came from the you know tribe of Judah. It's right in it's right in the New Testament, but. Leave that for another mm-hmm. another uh, episode. Uh, the people came out of the captivity, out of the bondage, and they uh, wanted to go back. And there's many cases where uh, Moses and Aaron intervened because God was just going to kill everybody just, you know, on a dime. Because you know, pissed off that the Old Testament God was not uh, necessarily friendly. He was a jealous God. And angry. You and people actually have the audacity to question. I'm right here in front of your face and you're questioning me. The, 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 the insolence of it is profound. He called, beyond profound. He, they called the uh, Hebrews a stiff necked people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I mean, I, I can say for those that are going to out there and say I'm a Khazarian Jew, I'm going to tell them bullshit because I'm stiff necked. So <laughs> I got it in me. Okay. But, uh, the uh, the people were perpetually rebelling, and Moses was continuously intervening. There was plagues, and Moses would make offerings to try to keep the plague from killing all the people. But that's why the Jews wandered in the desert for 40 years. The entire generation died off, except for Caleb and John. Even Moses, even Moses didn't make it into the promised land because he got pissed off, something you and I need to Something I need to look out for, that temper. He just lost his faith for a minute and struck a rock, and God didn't let him go into the uh, promised land either. So the entire crew didn't make it. You know, when you think about that, who actually went in there? What does that mean if it was only Caleb and Joshua? I never thought about that before. That's got something to do with Jewish identity, doesn't it? Maybe. Maybe. Absolutely. I'm yeah. going back to the book. I'm going to start reading. If you're a rabbi out there, you can certainly help me out. <laughs> because it says only Caleb and Joshua made it. Maybe the kids made it in. Maybe the original ones that, that's what it must be. The original ones that left died out, but their children must have gone in with Caleb and Joshua. The next generation. The next generation. Because that generation had a slave consciousness. And, you know, they just were carrying with them a dependency which didn't fit in with the idea of self-governance. It's so timely for what we're dealing with today, isn't it? It is, right. That's why I brought up the story. I mean, it just, and I, you know, obviously the boomers, I'm not, I'm not making a, a, a it's you're not, not just a, You're not saying you're going to want all the boomers to die in no, the desert, are no, you? No, I'm not saying that. No, what I'm saying is that the boomers are dying a death by a million cuts already whether they know it or not, whether they want to accept it or not. And again, to go back to, I don't mean to harp on Mark Levin, but it's just such a good example of, of the, the real problem in American politics. Like I said, I know who all these other pundits are. And the, 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 the strangest thing is that people actually think because Mark Levin defends Donald Trump, that makes him genuine or, or legitimate. That's that's the easiest thing Lindsey to do. Lindsey Graham defends Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, that's the easiest thing to do is defend Donald Trump and make that the 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 calling card the cover of your story. of your patriotism or your your uh, America first, uh, you know your America first identity. I mean, you know, so what? I mean, it's not hard. Look, it's not it's not hard. 
it's only hard for Marxists and communists to talk about the the absurdity of the LGBTQ or or the way that they've you know merged it with CRT or to talk about black on black crime or to talk about uh, China. I mean, you could turn on Fox. I mean, if you, if you listen to Mark Levin, you may in fact listen to him on Fox News. But you, if, even if you don't listen to him on Fox News, you might as well just watch Fox News. And if you go to Fox News, they'll talk about China. They'll talk about the LGBTQ. They'll, they'll talk about the black on black crime issue. They really love to talk about black on black crime issue. Uh, but but when you come, when you get to the military industrial complex level, they go radio silent. And there's no, no, a- no, 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 stop. No, mm-hmm. no, no. No what? They don't go radio silent. <laughs> they are an advertising platform for the military industrial yes. complex. And that's your issue yes. with Mark Levin. Yes. They have a guy named General Jack Keen. Keen. Mm-hmm. Piercing blue eyes. Yeah. Pretty boy Jack. Well, he's not that pretty. Yeah. Okay, but probably was when he was younger. When he was younger, yes. Yeah. And he actually made a comment which I think is quite striking. He said, uh, you know, typically when we're in these kind of crises, we devote about six percent of our GDP to military matters. 3.59 is not good enough. They want to double up because there's a lot of money left to rob. Yeah. 6%. Wow. Double the defense budget budget up to about $2 trillion? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And if you take a look at what countries are spending around the world on defense, this country dwarfs, dwarfs its competitors. But what people don't understand is a lot of that is going to military pensions, and military members. How much is actually going to uh, arms? Well, hell, they're stealing it anyhow. We got that story the last time. No, nobody knows. Nobody no, knows nobody because knows. we got all that funding at the university. Nobody. First of all, look, if you <laughs> if you have a money machine, a, a, a poor chain of custody in the audit and the and the 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 uh, you know the financial forensics. And you got wars and and black budgets and things that are, you know, uh, classified, redacted from the record, stricken from the record. Who knows how much it is? I mean, we don't even know. We We actually don't even know. We have no idea. We have no clue. We have no clue. And the black, I mean, the black budget's been out there for a long time. People know that. And as to back to my point to Reagan, you know, two things can be said at the same time. Were the Hebrew slaves in Egypt per the oral and written tradition? Yes. Do we know how those pyramids were built? No, we don't know. Did they probably provide a lot of labor in it, however it went down? Yes, but we don't know how the, how the laser cut precision and, and the astronomical alignment happened. That's weird, and there's a lot of it all around the, the world. Um, same thing can be, is Reagan, was Reagan a likable guy? Yeah, yeah, he was charismatic. You know, was he, was he you know, uh, sharp? Yes, he was sharp. Did he do some good things? I think so, personally. I actually think he did. Did he usher in the security state and the CIA, which is maybe the single greatest, um, the, the, the single greatest hindrance on this country is the power and influence and, and reach of the deep state? 100%. And see, all the people who watch Fox News who are quick to, to have an emotional and passionate sort of sort of response and, and and comment about about black on black crime. They're always very slow to talk about George Bush as a murderous thug. Right. Which it. one? Oh, d- j- Junior, little little how about, George. How about Senior? Well, they, yeah, I mean, but see, they don't even really want to talk. And and here's the thing: even in our movement, they'll say his name. They'll say that he was a uh, you know uh, rhino. They'll say that he was a uh, you know a neocon. They, they'll they'll call it for what it is but they don't really want to deal with the implications. Of I it. do. They don't really want to deal with the implications of what it means, what it, what, what it, what it represents, because it represents a defect in their own thinking, right? They, they don't want to deal with the global. You can't talk about globalism if you're not willing to deal with the global. If you think that the, the young black man who, uh, um, who gets in a car and does a drive-by shooting on his enemies in the in the next neighborhood and maybe accidentally shoots a, a little kid which is horrific and i think a lot of these young young men now um are on drugs and high and and some of them are just purely demonic because that's a real thing demonic possession 
But if you think they're any less demonic than George Bush Sr., you're invested in the Are the you theater. saying that George Bush Sr. Demonic. and a young black demonic. murderer are the same person? Oh, I want, oh, for sure. Isn't that great? For sure they're the same person, exact same person. When you same way Mark Levin and Amy Klobuchar are the same person. That, you know, and I want to put a little spin on this because um, I want to remind. Actually, George Bush Sr. is worse. Oh, he's a merchant of death. He's a general effect, of very, death. Very effective. Yeah, absolutely. He's what sophisticated. We, we talked about this the last broadcast, steal a little bit. They put you in jail, steal a lot, and they make you president. You know, I, I want to put a little spin on this because uh, the security state was quite well developed after World War II. And Eisenhower has that famous speech where he warns the American public about the military industrial complex and the technology and the technologists that are associated with it. And then of course, Jack, you know, Jack Kennedy was a victim of it. So, and then probably Richard Nixon was a, a victim of the security state. Oh, go yeah. back and look at the history. Yeah. So what I really like to, in my own mind, cause I was alive and I was there, what I really finger Reagan for is he ushered in an era of conspicuous consumption. Before Reagan, even if you had money, you hid it. Everybody lived in a small home. Everybody had one car. You didn't know who had money. Like there'd be a rumor, like, you know, I was going to synagogue and my dad would look over at me and he'd say, you see that guy, Beryl? I go, yeah, he's really rich. I'd look at me because he's kind of a fat, bald-headed looking nobody. No, he's really rich. Really is that? Yeah, he is. You know, it was like a rumor because Barrow lived in the exact same kind of house that we lived in. He lived one block over. We lived on Warwick in St. Paul. He lived on Saratoga in St. Paul. His house was the same value as ours. Mm -hmm. We were poor, I'm sure, <laughs> okay, because I was there. <laughs> but Barrow lived one block, and he was— Maybe your parents just made you think you were poor. No, they, we were poor. Okay. And why I know that is, my dad was a professor, and he had to work filling in potholes— for the city to feed me because mm -hmm. there was not enough money at that time in the university system because that was before the government got into the education business. That happened after the Marxists conquered the universities and went into... And, and tilted, and tilted the, the, the money machines in their own direction. Of course, because they wanted to get on the payroll. Right. And then they took it over at the level of the universities. But it was Reagan that ushered in for my generation, the boomer generation, where the boomers really lost it, is we just went crazy. We remember Gordon Gecko, what was Wall Street, um, Michael Douglas, greed is good. Nobody talked that way before Wall Street. They ushered in that era, that group of boomers and Reagan, because he was so suave bono, you know, and he was witty. And, you know, he was shilling for GE back in the 60s. The technology the technology of just technology, and then the technology of financializing our economy, which was ushered in by Nixon when he took the dollar off the gold standard in 72. It took a few years for them to figure out how to really get this thing burning. Yeah. So I think that the, not disagreeing with you, because of course Reagan operated a secret war and gave a lot of secret money to secret people, but John this, Kennedy said, "We we we are fundamentally opposed to secret societies, to secret societies and secrecy." And what happened to him? Boom, boom. Nothing more secret than the CIA. Nothing more secret than the company. I watched him die. I remember it. I I remember the watching. Agency, I, I remember boy. watching Jack Ruby, Jack Rubenstein, a Jewish gangster from Chicago, mobbed up. Shorten his name to Jack Ruby. He owned strip clubs down in Dallas. Got along with all the cops. You know, the typical thing you do when you're a criminal. Shoot uh, Oswald. I watched it. My mother watched it. She fainted. She'd never seen anybody killed before. I mean, I remember this stuff. So, But there was a... How did, I, they, how did they get him to do that? How do you think they got him to do that? First off, it, 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 it's ridiculous to think. It's ridiculous to think that Jack Ruby did that spontaneously. Because Jack Ruby wasn't even known per per the history and what you can read, which I'm not saying is is 100% accurate because if you're a gangster and you're a hitman, it's probably not well written. 
in the, in the history books, if you were doing it the right way, if you were good at it, people probably didn't know. But most of the, like, okay, let's go back and look at some other famous Jewish gangsters. Uh, Benjamin Siegel. Okay. Hitter. Bugsy. You talking about Bugsy? Bugsy Siegel. Scary dude, hitter. Everybody knew it. He was popular celebrity, but you didn't want him coming to kill you because he'd come kill you. And everybody knew it. Um, uh, let's, um, what's the, um, ch -ch -ch. any of those guys, any of those guys from that era, from, from the murder Inc era, any of those Jewish gangsters. Meyer Lansky, yeah, Kid Can. Kid Can, yeah, but. Isidore Blumenfeld. Uh, um, the Berman brothers here, here, and right here even, in Minneapolis. Even, even some of the Italian guys that were around the same time, like Albert Anastasia, guys who were, who were, uh, even, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, well, without going into the names. The point is, some of these guys they knew were killers, right? Some of these guys were killers, and they all knew they were killers. I mean, that everybody knew it. Because once the stories get told and the indictments go down and the murders get, you know. You're asking me why did Jack Ruby do that? The, and my How point did that is, happen? My point is, nobody regarded Jack Ruby as a hitman, as a kind of crazy, as a, as a as a as a tough guy as a, like you know we watched the movie Bugsy and they 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 replay the the this the, out which I don't know if it was true or not but that that Bugsy was thinking about trying to get over to kill Mussolini right he, that was part of the the Bugsy movie with uh with Warren Beatty and Ned Penny yeah and uh he's like he's trying to plot on how he can use uh the the, that was the Duke what, to to get over and kill Mussolini himself. He was going to go assassinate Mussolini himself. Jack Ruby wasn't wasn't regarded as that kind of guy. So how did they get him to go kill Oswald? Okay, this is a national assassination of a president at the time. And rubbing out the they get him to man. go kill him on national television. I mean, that's a far stretch beyond a payoff. I mean, that seems like somebody had to. That was like a psychological operation right there early on. It makes a lot of sense to me. To, what, what do you think? You, you lived. You, well, you're you asking the question, right? I mm -hmm. mean, I've never thought about this, but you said how, how, how could he get his mind put that way? Did you make the comment about demonic possession? Yes. Okay. Let's leave that as a possibility. Okay. But, you know, if you commit yourself in life to a course of action like we have, what? Why does it have to be, you know, in pursuit of truth? It could be in pursuit of darkness. So, but again, no, no. Let's go back over the story. Why would a man who's tied, who's who's mobbed up, okay? Why would a man who's mobbed up go to avenge the assassination of a man of a president who was crossed with the mob? That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. It seems to me like he was a hitman on that date, doesn't it? He had a lot of police connections. He was recognized by the Dallas police. He had access to that police station because, you know, they all went down to the strip club and, you know, drank for free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was the right guy to get in the building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the part that I'm working with is what is the psychological mechanism which would motivate a man in his late 50s or early 60s to give up his life to do something that he knew that there was no way out. There's no way out. And you just have to get to that place in your life where you understand that. I mean, I, I'm just going to tell you, at my age, it's something that I think about. I mean, do you want to die sucking on a fentanyl lollipop? Or would you like to do something that is glorious? Now, maybe in his mind, that was a glorious thing to do because he was into the criminal lifestyle. Mm. And the guys took him aside and said, you know, we have a special mission you'll be famous for a thousand years and he will be we need to do this and they knew that he was the right guy to do it or it could be he was a cia operative and they had him all tweaked out we don't know because he died in prison of cancer and never gave any interviews that were dispositive about why or who or what and he rubbed out oswald so we never knew where he was coming from <laughs> It's a pretty damn good crime, actually, if you think about it. The perfect crime. We're still talking about it all these year late all these years later. And you know, under Trump. And who'd you feel? Let's talk about the Warren Commission, because when you I mean the Mason Commission. Yeah, when when please, and because I think when I when I when I talk about the security state and deep state and and Reagan and the Bushes and the CIA 
it still has that sort of cloud of, uh, you know, it's, it's like a, it's not tangible. You can't really feel it. The Warren Commission is probably the greatest example of how the gov- cover up the government just blatantly comes together and covers shit up, and the American people s- just eat it. They gobble it up. Well, let, let me just before we get into that, I don't follow this stuff closely because here's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the scene in Braveheart mm-hmm. where the Scots and the English are going to have a battle, and these guys run down these hills and smash into each other. But of course, in a battle, somebody wins. Online or in news. Like this guy that was allegedly giving the information about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden being corrupt, and now he's indicted. I I can't make any sense of that. I can't make any sense of that at all. I have no way, from my perspective, I mean, I can believe somebody's story and give over to it and say, oh, I'm a Democrat. The guy's a scumbag, you know? Or I could say, oh, no, I'm a Republican. He's falsely accused. You know, there's no way that I'm going to find any evidence that I'm going to be able to read that I can rely on that lets me understand who this guy is. They've taken a governmental investigation and they've ground it into a scrum and neutralized it very effectively. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, that's kind of like the Warren Commission. That's kind of like the Kennedy killing. It's just turned into a giant scrum. There are still people that believe that Oswald was the lone gunman, even there was a even though there was a House committee on assassinations that said it was a conspiracy, but they didn't finger anybody. They couldn't tell what happened. And that was a reaction to the Warren Commission, which who was on the Warren Commission? Okay, first of all, one of the Dulles brothers, the guy that ran the CIA, that Kennedy sacked after the Bay of Pigs, the guy that ran the whole deal who was in the OSS, that was the precursor of the CIA the, mm-hmm. you know, during World War II. These people were spooky. These people killed leaders and, de- and toppled governments and ran fake elections. And I mean, the, these people perfected the black art of the United States of America. And Dulles was on this committee. The guy that actually had the... The most to gain. <laughs> the most to gain from it. The <laughs> most, I mean, it's crazy. Then they had Gerald Ford on there, mm-hmm. you know, who became the president that pardoned Nixon, who also got smoked by the CIA. If you go back and look at the plumbers and the whole, you, if you want to see a predicate for what's going on to Trump, go look at what they did to Nixon. Mm-hmm. And it's really well documented. Now, people are going to see it from whatever street corner they want to look at it. And I certainly... Uh, remember driving back from the Boundary Waters Canoe Area with my father coming down 35, listening to the uh, Watergate Commission, Sam Irvin, and my dad thought Nixon was just a criminal. And it's not clear that he was a criminal. I mean, if you really go back and look at it and get away from the Washington Post and the New York Times, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you realize what the Justice Department did to Nixon, they ran his ass out of the presidency. Now, he could have been a criminal, another scrum. Because you can read these things a lot of different ways. But the point is, when there's no sacred honor and you're running a secret government. Ford, Dulles, who else was on there? A guy named Hale Boggs. Hale Boggs, he disappeared. Hale Boggs was a congressperson. Was LeMay on the commission? No. It was, uh, it was um, uh, Ford was on there and Dulles was on there. And uh, there was a famous um, Southern racist whose name's escaping me. They were all Masons. That was the interesting. There was a tie. The, 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 the group that put together the report, the main drivers, they were Masons. All of them were Masons, which is scary in and of itself, which means you don't have to have a conspiracy. We just all see it the same way. Nothing to talk about. <laughs> okay, we see it, you know, eye to eye. Mm-hmm. But the guy, the one guy who maintained some skepticism of the report was a guy from Alaska named Hale Boggs and his plane disappeared and Hale disappeared. His body was never found. Disappeared. Hale Boggs? Hale Boggs. Bye-bye, Hale. Disappeared in a cloud of dust. Plane disappeared. disappeared. That's correct. On a plane. On a plane. On a plane. That's correct. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And people. (laughs) It was a private plane, too. It was a small private plane. Way to go. Oh, uh, man. So they, they, uh, they, they don't, they, this podcast is fucking 
Jim. Can I can I say something about the pod? We get this great feedback. <laughs> we get this great feedback, and I really appreciate it from the, the mm. viewers and listeners. Mm. You know, go to caucus, please. I mean, you know, Royce is a candidate. He's putting his ass on the line. I'm getting death threats constantly. You know, I'm not asking anybody to do what I'm doing. I'm just asking people to give 24 hours a year to self-governance and to start to understand what self-governance is. Anyhow, before we get to that, this whole thing with this committee, this um, Warren Commission, they had this, for the young for the young listeners, you need to look up the magic bullet. And why I know you need to look it up, because we talked about it and it was, it was new for you. Mm-hmm. They had this bullet that hit Kennedy, and hit Connolly. I mean, in other words, this bullet, they had this bullet going around like the magic bullet. It was like flying around like a bumblebee. And it <laughs> it was a magic bullet because they, they even call, they called it the magic bullet because it didn't make any sense. Magic bullet theory. The magic bullet theory. It's a bullet that had its own brain. It was a smart bullet. Maybe it was the technology from the Egyptians. <laughs> <laughs> Those Egyptians, man. <laughs> Blame it on the Egyptians. <laughs> Zero point gravity bullets in the 1960s. Shoots around corners. Anyhow, they, they exonerated um, everybody and said it's this crazy ass Oswald. He was the lone gunman. And then right after that, uh, Malcolm X got killed. And that was another bizarre killing. And then right after that, Martin Luther King got killed, which was another bizarre killing. And then right after that, uh, RFK got killed. And so I was alive for all four of those killings. And I'll tell you what happened to young people like me. And this is how Reagan got away with it. After World War II, that was... Wait, a, Reagan got away with what? With turning the country into mater- a materialist okay, pursuit. got it. We came out of World War II. That was a first turning. 88 million people died in four years. And after that, people had a great sense of, oh, shit. We better rein this in. And even though there was nuclear weapons, there was never going to be a war where, the, you know, there was a confrontation with the Russians. And they called it the Soviet Union. That was a scam. It was the Russians. Everybody knew that if it went past a certain line, it was going to get out of control. So there was a great effort to keep things, you know, reined in. It was a first turning. And people were optimistic. And... I grew up in this period, the country was the country was a lot like China is today. This Jonah Gold, Goldberg, who is a, another Mark Levinish kind of character, has been posting up stuff that, you know, somebody said, well, Chinese citizens are, are better off than American citizens. And Jonah Goldberg said, that's just crazy. And I just posted up in there, you, read, you know, you ever been there, buddy? Do you know anything about China? Because I do. I've been there hundreds, over a hundred times. I married into the culture. I know a lot about China, and I know the citizens there actually have a very good life. They really do. Now, the fact that they buy into a, a one-party totalitarian regime, what's interesting about that? Here's the deal they make. As long as my 401k keeps getting bigger, I'm okay with whatever you want to do. As long as I'm making money. Same as us. And that was the point that the the writer was making that these people got it because they got more in their 401k than we do right now. Anyhow, going back to this. Yeah, no, it's the, our money in their 401k. That's, well, we gave it to No, they're taking it. We're yeah. giving it. They're taking mm-hmm. But going back to these four martyrs, what happened to the young people like me is first we were stunned and then we became afraid because we recognized that if you were advancing black nationalism, like a Malcolm X, mm-hmm. and you were taken to, oh, you were advancing equal access to opportunity like Malcolm X, or you were a Robert Kennedy who has taken the ideas of all three, his brother and the two previous martyrs, and he had amalgamated it into a, a Democrat platform really of well-being for the people, which his son really is talking about human well-being. Yeah, conservative. Conservative Democrats. <clears throat> Who even cares about the labels? Yeah. It's about but well- But they were, I mean, Kennedy was a Catholic boy. 
Well, that's right. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, it was before Roe versus Wade, which was used as the great dividing line in the country. What happened was, is we became very self-concerned. People went from being very optimistic, really involved with the concept of America. Then we had the Vietnam War. There's the military industrial complex that, again, kill, 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 kill. And people got really afraid. So then here comes Reagan. And Reagan says, hey, to get rich is glorious. You need to have a McMansion. You need two cars. You need to take at least two vacations a year. We're going to financialize everything. We're going to put all this money in your hands. Mm. We're going to buy you off now, boomers. Quit your war protesting. Cut your hair, you hippies. Oh, you can go fuck your brains out. There's no sexual boundaries anymore. That's gone. So we're going to give you more all money the money you li- get, the more pussy you get. That's correct. <laughs> the more money you get, you can just give up your spiritual boundaries. You can be grateful. That's all the boomer owners of the NBA. They wonder why these professional sports leagues went to shit. That's the exact mentality of the NBA owners. Oh, please tell. I would like to hear this. Go ahead, please. Tell me all about it. Well, I mean, it's, it's simple. These are guys who use, have probably always used their, their professional financial success to, to try and, you know, to, to uh, pursue their, their sexual ambitions, their romantic ambitions. That's what it is. Guys who, under normal circumstances, could never be fucking a supermodel based on physical appearance or even charm. I mean, Steve Ballmer, are you kidding me? Now, to the fact that Steve Ballmer may, I'm, I'm not even talking about the man's sexuality. I don't know. He's a little strange, but that's not even the point. I mean, if you were palling around and partnered up with Bill Gates, you're probably into some weird shit. Um, but that's not my point. The point is there was a, there's a profound echelon of boomers who use their financial and professional success uh, to, to, for, for sexual uh, gains. It went all the way down to the mud people. It did. You didn't have to be a billionaire to get this down. Mm. All you had to do is have a job, right? But they were the they were the uh, they were the sales pitch. They were the poster. They children. were they were the poster children. Right. That and we were all aspiring, and that was another part of the scam. Yes, we. You can't go after these people because we could be just like them. We want to be like we them. We want to. If be we go like after them, them, then we kill our chances of being like That's them. That's right. It's Darwinian. We want our shot. Boomer cons. Boomer cons. Yeah, I hadn't heard that before. Yeah, boomer cons. These are the people that that think that capitalism, and free markets, and free market free enterprise, trade. free trade, and free market enterprise are are net, you know, are net positive. There's you know, not- you're, you're looking at an expert in this area. Mm-hmm. I'm an expert, and uh, I was actually, I, I'm not wasn't at the top of the heap, but I was pretty far up the mountain and climbing higher, climbing, mm-hmm. and I had a chance to get up to the top echelon. I don't know what happened to me, Royce. And I recognized this when we first started to get to know each other. And I, I want to share this for the listeners and viewers. Yeah, go ahead. Both of us, both of us emptied out of that game. Now, people tell stories. It pisses me off. People um, impugn you online. It makes me angry because I know you. Of course, you know, not everybody gets to know you like I know you. I've been on an airplane with Royce many times. We've flown together many times, Mm -hmm. many times. I've watched him manage his emotion, get on that plane, and we get off that plane, his, you know, he could be even T-shirt soaked because of the anxiety that comes. And I'll tell you, I have anxiety flying too. Mm -hmm. But you fly, you can fly, uh, and you just took a stand. You said, you know what, if you sons of bitches are going to, disregard uh, my humanity at this level, you can go bite a hog in the ass, fuck off. I know you did that because I did the same thing. I was really involved, and that's why I say I know China, Jonah Goldberg. You've probably been there once maybe, or you wouldn't sound like such a dumbass. I was at the top end of globalization. I was in China in 93. That's the second wave. The first wave was right after Nixon opened it. So the guys that went over in the late 70s, oh, they really made money, and they're billionaires, all of them. I went in the second wave in 93, 
And the money was great. And when I went to China, there was no cars. People were on bikes. They were walking. I mean, they, they were really in the Stone Age. So guys like me that had access to technology and capital, you know, it was a, a chance to be a boomer con. Mm-hmm. And I lived it out to the max. Yeah, you're a boomer con. That, exactly. And then <laughs> something happened to me. No, I yeah. was in a hotel room in China in, in 2015. Yeah. And I had a, a Jerry Maguire night where I just said, you know what? These people hate me. Mm-hmm. They hate me. And I'm not going to take money and do business because I have some sacred honor, right? Mm-hmm. I said, you know, you go, I go bite a hog in the ass. I'm not doing this. Of course, it impoverished me, um, and I'm no longer a boomer con. But guess what? It's all part of God's plan. I'm okay with it. It's just that people have to understand that this boomer generation, most of my generation, is so bought in. And now they're even too old to be boomer cons. They're kind of, but they're not going to give it up. Now it's, oh, I'm powerful. Not because of my ability to have breeding rights, because of the F-16s flying over the stadium. I look at my 401k. I'm smarter than David Penn. We got friends like that. We know who those folks are. We're so smart. We got the money. You don't. You know, that is not a measure for me. Yeah. It's just not a measure. That's because unfortunately Well and it's 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 sort of it's sort of a little uh, a little gay thing to, you know, and I don't mean gay in a sexual way. You know, there's gay in a sexual way and then there's gay in a in a sort of uh, uh sneaky little effeminate kind of uh crook scammy, you know, schemy kind of way, gay. You know, it's like you Like know, I got two personalities. Like, you know, like the kid who's uh you know, who's such a little dweeb kind of socially awkward fuck at school, you know, he kind of, he'll, he'll kind of set the thing up and then he'll be the one to run to the teacher. You know, that's in the black community. That's what we regard as being a snitch, you know, and people are like, well, the black on black crime is never going to change if you don't, I mean, no, if, if the black community doesn't want to cooperate with the police or the authorities, uh, excuse me, uh, what? No, the, 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 the reality is uh, black people know very well that if you see a guy get shot and you go to testify, right, you go to go to give. You might go to jail. Well, worse than that, people come after you to stop them from going to jail. And, and if we can't even protect our police, what makes you think we're going to be protecting witnesses? You know how many witnesses get killed? In the '90s, let's say. You mean like in the Lee 2000s? Harvey Oswald? Like Lee Harvey Oswald. Like Lee Harvey Oswald. Like Lee yeah, Harvey there Oswald. you go. That's a great example. That is. They couldn't even protect the man who assassinated the president. Give me a break. <laughs> this guy is scary. <laughs> Come on. They couldn't even keep him. They couldn't keep him safe to get him to the gallows. So, uh, so uh, you know, and he killed the man. He killed the president. Well, they at least they, they s- couldn't. They, they could. They say at least had, they say he did. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, Patsy, I'm Jermaine said. Johnson from 115th Street in Chicago, and I I witnessed a you know now am I going to change my life? Am I going to am I going to think about moving? Is it going to have a profound effect on me? You know, internally, spiritually, maybe. But what does that have to do with the official cooperation with the government? And my point in, in in bringing that up is, you know, we we is all well, you know, black on black crime or, or whatever the you know any of these things. Look. The 401k, the, 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 when you see the F-16s fly over, that's exactly what you're saying. The 401k is like, oh, well, we put into this. This is this. And really what it is is regret. See, and that's the, that's the killer. Self-hatred. It's really self-hatred. Yeah, it's self-hatred and regret. Because you've given up you the know, essence. Yeah. You know that you gave up your freedom. You know you signed on the dotted line. You know you were a part of the fucking scam. And now you don't want to hear well, it. Well, that part, that part. And But, the, but the F-16s sh- make it. It's like, it's like, it's like when you. Uh, the F-16 is the symbol of their freedom and their power. The, 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 the correlation is, is like, let's say you're a drug dealer, right? And. Uh, I know that I got rich from poisoning the community. I know I, I got rich by trafficking heroin or meth or fentanyl, or whatever it is, into the community, right? And you have that that sense of guilt, but you justify it because you're a materialist, and and so you know you you don't sleep at night. That's the Soros line. You don't if I you don't, don't do it. Somebody else is going to. You do don't it. sleep at night. You don't sleep at night. You lose sleep at night. You're up up all you know, and and but you have a beautiful car. 
right? A beautiful car. You have a beautiful uh, woman. Woman, yeah, right? Yeah, nice or, house or clothes, jewelry, whatever it is. House, all the material trappings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you when you uh, when you have those profound moments of guilt, you go and you sit in your house. You go outside, you look at your house, or you go sit in your car, or you go put on your best clothes, or you go spend money on some extravagant vacation. That's just you pacifying the guilt and the regret you have. That's exactly what the boomers do writ large when the F-16s fly over the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, oh. we bought into the scam, or when but they... this is the sign. It's, and then they got the audacity to justify, justify it by saying it's protecting the next generation. It's We're pr protecting the people. It's protecting Israel. Well, that too. You no, said no, Mark it. Levin. Yeah. That's, I mean, the whole thing about protecting the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. and protecting it's got nothing time. to do with the Ukraine. Right. It's, it's got nothing to do with Israel. Don't. It has to do with his own regret. His own self hatred. That's a profound. And then everybody that's watching him, they get the same jerk gets off. Gets the secondhand jerk Sorry, off. Secondhand. There you go. We need that T-shirt. <laughs> Don't be a secondhand jerk off. <laughs> secondhand jerk off. Look, and I don't mean to get down on the boomers because it's no, not just ahead, the boomers. No, go ahead, please. Because I'm it's really done. I came in angry. But it's not just the boomers. I mean, my generation has a whole different can of worms they're dealing with. They've never known a. They've never known a. a they've never known a country with sacred honor. Oh. They don't even have a concept of what That's sacred really honor sad, means. Man. They're just That's purely sad. materialistic at their, they're so materialistic that their, their uh, sort of construction of solving the world is completely based on materialism. Well, that would be transhumanism. And Marxism, oh. right? Their thing is, well, pfft. I mean, they, they have the intuition something's wrong, but it's way perverted because they have no, they have no concept of start, sacred honor. I was honor. just starting to feel better. I came in angry, and it's so nice to see you. And I was starting to mellow up. We're having a good time, and I, I almost cried. I mean, I'm not going to cry, but I mean, the emotion that welled up in me when, because I, of course, I'm in a different cohort, so I don't, I don't recognize what it's like. I give you, I give you an example. Okay, I'm doing Alex yesterday, right? Okay, I was the host for the fourth hour. <laughs> Come on, I'm in the waiting. I'm in the waiting room. I'm in the queue. Yeah. So I'm watching the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's running a clip of a black guy, bald headed black guy at the front of a room. Looks like some college class, maybe some some type of seminar or, or you know, presentation or whatever. <laughs> guy is just saying, white people are psychopaths. White people are hateful. White, you know. He's just going on a full full anti white diatribe, right? And the funniest thing about it was. The guy was obviously homosexual. I mean, it was strikingly, he was strikingly homosexual. Okay. But he had on a very well tailored, you know, fitted, you know, Oxford blue sort, you know, suit with a tie, bald head, clean shaven, and he talked like a liberal white woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I mean, when you talk about my generation, and he looked like he was probably about somewhere between 30 and 40. Um, but when you talk about my my generation of it, I mean, they 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 are the they are the um, they are the characters in a play that they never knew the curtain was pulled up on. I mean, they were just born in the play. Imagine you're born in a play. That's the Matrix, right? Imagine you're born in a play. You're born in it while the play is happening. They have an actual birth in a play in a play that extends on for for years and years for generations. That's most of Americans in my generations. But your your generation, they actually put the play together. They were there at the start of the play. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. So there's a difference. There is a difference. But that doesn't mean your generation takes is more, any less fucked up than mine. It probably takes more drugs to pacify yourself. For sure. Right. Because yeah. that was really what the generation was, the Reagan thing. Reagan had the great war on drugs, which they took. <coughs> they took down really the, the black community in the war on drugs, which was like, look over here. Well, all the white people were getting higher than fuck. Oh, you know what? I, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's something I wanted to say. I was on Getter, and this is where the racism really does still exist in a kind of ugly and 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 uh, an unproductive way. You know, while Donald Trump's making the the greatest inroads in the history in the recent history of of American politics with the black community, there's all these people out there that I see that are just hell bent on on undoing it. There were there was a uh, an indictment or an arrest of, of some drug dealers in Italy. Okay. And, and all of them looked like they were probably of African descent. They looked, they looked African. They had an African kind of. Yeah, look to them. Yeah. I mean, they didn't look like 
they were black. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. In America, we have black people, but then we have African people. There's a difference. You know, there are American blacks and then there are Africans. People immigrated here from Africa well after the slave trade or slavery and, and that deal. But in Europe, it's different, right? Because the people who live in Europe, a lot of times who are of African descent, uh, were, were there more recently anyway, right? In the late 1900s or, you know, only a generation or two. And there are people that are immigrating there legally uh, all the time to Europe, right? So, th- so it's a little bit different. But anyway, um, I saw somebody on Gitter take the, I don't know, it's probably about a dozen photos of these these individuals who were arrested in these drug drug uh, arrests and this drug uh, indictment. And in, in the the caption read, um, "What do you what 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 do you notice about all the pit about all the people in the picture?" Oh no. I'm not gonna like this answer. No, what are this? What are the similarities? No, and they were they didn't answer the question, but they were all black. They were all African. They were all immigrants. And see, this is the kind of shit. These are the kind of fucking lies we tell ourselves in the conservative movement. It's the same thing with Reagan and the war on drugs. We actually will take Fox News showing us the end, the end result of a of a well coordinated theater, a well coordinated social engineering they'll show us the end result and we'll take the characters at the end result and place all the blame on them like you think if you think the fucking africans run the drug trade in italy you're a fucking moron you're stupid honestly i mean i mean even if they're pitching hand to hand even if they're out there even if they're distributors let's say even if they're at the distributor the distribution level if you think they're running the racket, you're a fucking <clears throat> moron. The the Camorra, the Indri- I mean, we're talking about Italy. We're talking about the 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 birthplace of the mob, the birthplace of mafia, of of organized crime. You can go right up the street to the Vatican too, and there's another birthplace of organized crime. And I'm a Catholic. I mean, it just is what it is. These places are highly organized, dangerous motherfuckers. Okay. They got juice, real juice. And I start to think that people who don't acknowledge where the real juice is in the chain of command or in the supply chain or in the, or in the, in the, in the you know. They're into the diversion. I start to think that they're in on it. Now, you know, if you're just a regular citizen and you're like, oh, you know, look at all these black people that are involved in this drug deal. I get it. I get it. Some people aren't even thinking that deep. But come on. I mean, there, there's a point where your ignorance is so willful that we might as well treat you like you're in on it. There's a point where you're so fucking stupid. Well, isn't that the We point? should treat you like you're like you're guilty. That's called spreading the good word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. If, if, if I leave my child, if I if I'm a mother, okay, and I leave my child, my two year old child, in a car, while I run into a hotel, and I turn six tricks for five hours, and the child dies from heat in the in the dead of the summer. Does it matter that I was stupid? Not to the child. <laughs> no. Not to the fucking courts. Right. And it shouldn't. It rightfully shouldn't matter. Yeah, you were fucking dumb. And we have laws in, in this game. We have a standard. We have a, a, an expectation of, of how people should, should live in our society. And you were too fucking dumb. You didn't meet the criteria. That's dumb. And there was, there was significant harm done from the... Now, I'm not saying people should be hauled off to jail because they're too dumb and they've been scam politically but what i am saying is at least in our intellectual expectations and standards we create way too much pass for people who are so willfully ignorant there's no difference than being in on the scam and if you actually believe that the drugs that are coming across that southern border that the drugs that are sold in black communities that the 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 craze and the chaos that's happening in black communities is solely on the black people in those communities, you're a fucking moron. If you think that drugs could come into this country without the most expensive military in the world, in the history of the world, being in on the deal, you're a fucking moron. You're lying to yourself. Particularly when we have all kinds of evidence. Surveillance. Of them being in on it and getting well, caught many times but, but over not the years. Even, yeah, aside from the fact that we have the evidence that they're in on it, just in general, even if you didn't have that evidence, just let's take the 
common sense. Yeah, where's the interdiction? Where's the surveillance? You know, I went through. I went through the. Come Tam- on, man. No, no, I went through the Tampa airport. The CIA selling drugs. The FBI knows who the fuck is selling drugs because the CIA is helping them, and they come in and and fucking they come and indict the guys, and and that's why your mm. freeway Ricky Rosses, who was a big drug kingpin back in the nineties, you can go listen to his story. I have listened, and to and it. he met the Nicaraguans in the middle of the Iran Contra scandal, and he was flooded with drugs at a great price, and he put them all. He was selling drugs from Los Angeles, California, to all the inner city markets all across the country. And it really was that simple. Reagan. Iran-Contra. Iran-Contra. Mark Ali Levin. North, Ali North, who's Ali right on North, Fox News. Ali North. He's a hero to the boomers. Edward, Edwin Meese. Mark Ooh. Levin. Okay. That's correct. Mark Levin was, <laughs> was the, the chief of chief staff, of, for, chief Edwin staff for Edwin Meese. I guess he knew all about it, didn't okay. he? Okay. Oh, and, and, and look who has a comfy, uh, plush fucking position on Fox News talking about black-on-black crime and the Constitution. Fuck you, motherfucker. The Constitution. How, how constitutional was it for you to help flood our fucking streets in America with drugs? And, oh, you didn't know? Well, how many of you didn't know? Nobody knew. Nobody knew anything. Huh? Well, come- Only Oliver North, right? And then and that's he took the, the fall. That's the cutout, the man. The fall guy. Yeah, he took the fucking He's fall. The what fall? He's what the fall? Oswald. He's the What fucking fall did he take? And this is the shit that pisses me off with these white boomers. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> no, I'm fucking serious. What fucking fall did Oliver North take exactly? I a think... fall from professional uh, uh, grace and, and, and honor? A fall from military what? Uh, uh, um, um, Colonel Ellie North. Yeah. He took a fall from... He went to jail for a he, while, didn't he? He, he? he went to jail for fucking six months. Okay, he got a pass. They was gave, he pardoned? I don't know if they pardoned him, but they gave him a pass. He had a very, very soft sentence. Very, very soft sentence. Actually, actually... Well, wait, 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 wait. And, well, the point I'm making is... Jeff Ford... And this is why Kanye West said what he said about Larry Hoover. And see, people didn't understand this. And, and they didn't want to really have to deal with the reality of what Kanye West was saying here. Oliver North runs a secret operation with the government, who we know many other people had to co-sign in order for it to happen. Oliver North is the cutout man, and then the, the least they could do to make it look legitimate is slam Oliver North on paper. Even if you're going to walk him out the back door and let him move to the fucking Galapagos Islands and live the rest of his life in, in, in wealth and, and riches, even if you were going to do that, and I'm not saying there's not a time for some of that to take place because some stuff is beyond our comprehension. I don't think fighting the Sandinistas and all was one of those times, but I'm just saying, I get it. There's shit that goes on that's, behind the every, that's beyond the every average day American's comprehension. Even if you were going to do that, at least slam this motherfucker on paper. They didn't. They, they lionized him. They lionized him. Jeffrey Fort. Gang leader in Chicago, try to organize black people. Yeah, there were already drugs in the community. Larry Hoover, another gang leader in Chicago, try to organize the black community around a set of principles, although it had to deal with crime. It had to deal with the, the jungle that was out there in the streets the same way the American military and the American people have a set of ideas, but we still have to kill and go to war when the time comes. Now, do people think it's justified? Of course they don't. Some people don't think it's justified. Some people in America don't think it's justified. Some people around the world don't think it's justified. Some people in the black community don't think that the, the, the certain crimes that go on in the black are justified. That's a matter of opinion. But the point is, they gave these people life sentences and no human contact for selling the drugs or killing on behalf of the drug sales. And Oliver North gets to go and live in, 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 in what? In, 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 uh, in, As a hero. As an American hero, almost. No, not almost. Well, I mean, you know, ipso fact. I mean, they, you know, on paper, he probably suffered a lot of military, uh, you know, dis, dishonor for, you know, dishonorable discharges and or whatever, you know, what those type of things. It goes right back to that. But you know what I'm saying. That My point is. Era, that whole era was a transition. You know, there's something very real about watching your president get killed. There was a reality of the World War II period. When we got into this Reagan era and these people that you're talking about Mm -hmm. that were put on ice and we started to lose track of right and wrong and true and false. That's what you're saying. It was about power and money. That's what I'm saying about Reagan. It was the transition 
to pure materialism to power and money. And Reagan, you know, he wrapped himself in the cloth of faith, but of it was it was a BS story. It's easy to do. Same way it's easy to wrap yourself in the Constitution. But what's the what's the truth? The truth. The truth is, the most the most disgusting thing you could do to the American identity, the most disgusting thing you could do in the name of America, is to steal money from the American taxpayers to go kill other people to solve nothing. As a ra- oh, and then erect a boogeyman over a ten year period, and then blame him for all the killing, and that would be. Vladimir Putin. Absolutely. You know, we never got to it last time, and we got we. Uh, Go ahead. We got a little time. We do. How much? We got a couple minutes, no, right? We got about thirty Pe- minutes. People wanted to talk and hear us talk about Tucker and and Putin. Yes. And that, and uh, we didn't get to, because for the viewers and listeners, I mean, this you put Royce and I in a room, we never know where we're going to go, because we we think this way, and then what happens is some gems tumble out, like boomer cons or. I get to have a mea culpa and say, you know what? I was part of that, but I, I was saved. I actually was saved. So people can be redeemed, but they have to want to be saved. Mm. If you don't want to be saved, you shall not be saved. You have to want to. Yes. But, you know, the, the, we had this uh, interview, and we're talking about the erection of boogeymen so that we have a reason to operate this racket. Because it is a racket. It yes. is a pure business model, which we call around Free People Radio the British business model of slavery, drugs, and piracy. Slavery being now debt slavery. It's no longer chattel slavery. Although with all this immigration into the country, I have personally, personally, recently run into actual human slavery in my neighborhood. Because when you bring all these people in and they're not citizens, they're easily abused, easily abused. So I actually have seen real, old-time, pre-Civil War. Undocumented means unregulated. Sexual slavery. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just crazy. Anyhow, mm-hmm. we got debt slavery. Now we have the reintroduction of actual human slavery. Drugs we're talking about. And, of course, this whole, got to be careful about this, but this whole illegal drug thing, hey, I'm just going to say if you're a boomer, like from, just ask yourself, what's the inventory in your medicine chest? So we got the slavery, we got drugs, the drug business, got the slavery business, the debt slavery business, the low cost wage slavery business, we got the drug business, and then we got piracy, piracy being the war business. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a reason to operate these things. If they just can't come out of nowhere, people might notice. You have to have a reason to do it. You have to have a reason. So we, we created this reason in Putin. And for those of us that have really studied the reason, now you can look at it from different street corners. I'm in these chats with these people in these threads. We were listening to Michael McCall this morning before we went on. Mm. Former ambassador to Russia. Hates Putin. Talking about what a great man Navalny was. Well, it depends who you talk to about Navalny. The left is erecting him as a lion of democracy. But if you go listen to, let's say, Al Jazeera, which is a Qatari-based news source, you can go right on, just go to Al Jazeera, put in Navalny's name, and what are they going to tell you? Ultra-white nationalist Islamophobe that called Muslims cockroaches. <laughs> so, you know, here's Mika Brzezinski talking about what a great freedom fighter Navalny is, but we're going to forget about the fact that he was a white ultra-nationalist. He was so white ultra-nationalist that he was too far to the right for Putin. He was outflanking Putin. When that, you know, so that goes back to who is Putin, which is why Tucker went there. And we didn't get to talk about it last time. And I, I do want to say, first of all, first of all, the presumption, the presumption. So many of these people have never listened to Tucker Carlson or Steve Bannon. They've never listened to his show. Mm. They never listened to him. Right. They never listened to Alex Jones. No, I'm not saying Alex Jones hasn't done and said things that are out there, but in sum and total, how can you have an opinion about somebody and not have it done? You know, if your research is listening to secondhand jerk offs with PhDs from Columbia, you're going to get a secondhand jerk off perspective on these issues. 
So I just want to say Tucker Carlson, to me, from my street corner, is a journalist, and the implication was that he has an editorial perspective, like all these people that are on MSNBC and CBS and ABC and Reuters and AP don't have a journalistic perspective or an editorial perspective. All these people that are reporting the news, whoever it is, including here on Free People Radio, all of us have an editorial perspective and an editorial content, even when we're trying to talk about the news because we're seeing the news through our eyes. That's why I always say there's four street corners. you got to get four different perspectives. And actually, that's just reductionistic. There's an infinite number of perspectives. And if we're really doing our job as American citizens, we're listening to everybody. So I'm not saying anybody has to like Tucker, but at least listen to him. Because guess what? Maybe 3 million people are listening to Mark Levin on a good night. If he's really lucky, probably more like a million. I bet that Putin interview was probably up at 300 million views now. 300 million, something like that. It was going over 200 million last I looked. So there's an interesting uh, perspective from Tucker. And he's been widely criticized because he went to a supermarket in Russia and he was talking about how ordered the society was and how affordable things were in the Russian supermarket. And all he's saying is, wow, they have some things going on here we need to look at. I don't think he's even pro-Russian. This presumption that anybody's pro-Russian or pro-Putin, that's just a psyop made to label the American citizens that want to be concerned with the well-being of other American citizens. You said it in your own way. You don't care about what happens to the polls. You're caring about what happens in your own community. And you, there's, a, there's a difference between there's a difference between caring what happens to the polls uh, uh, or the, the people in the Balkan states or, or the Romanians um, intellectually as a moral and ethical issue, or, or you know, it, it, spiritually, there's a difference in caring about them that way, and then the practical, the practical of defending their borders with our dollars and and soldiers and equipment and and young people. Those are two different things. And what's happened is is that Tucker went there, and he interviewed him, and then mysteriously, Navalny dies right on the other side of it. Mysteriously, I even have to say, what was Putin's benefit out of that? How did he benefit from that? which they say, well, he's got an election coming up. But he has tremendous broad-based support, allegedly, amongst the Russian people. Now, of course, any- not buying Not buying that, that, that Navalny was, was, that, um, was that influential politically there in Russia to, to threaten— uh, Well, he's becoming very influential here in America, isn't he? To, to, to threaten the approval of—first of all, you can't say two things at the same time. <laughs> I mean, they, they, this is how stupid they think people are. That's very important that you say that. You can't say these two things at the same time. That Vladimir Putin is a evil dictator who controls the who has state run media and iron if, grip of control. And if need be, will rig the elections. Obviously, because if you're saying he's a mass murdering dictator and he's gonna invade Poland, Romania, and the Balkan states, obviously he's he did, Hitler. Obviously he wouldn't care about having a fair election. So you can't tell me that Navalny was such a political threat that Vladimir Putin, the big bad wolf needs to kill him in the in the cover of night why i'm going to cheat i'm going to cheat the election anyway but what they really don't want to say is that he has broad support there in russia from the russian people because the russian people have a profound sense of their own identity and they have more importantly i'll say again the russians have a profound sense of geographical identity that's something that we don't really have here obviously we don't have it here in america on on a broad basis but Vladimir Putin explained the history of Russia. I thought that was the biggest takeaway. That the Russian identity by by a man like Vladimir Putin is very geographical in nature. And and that's that's something that They're historical in nature. Well, but it's geographical. But it's historical yes, also. For sure. He's able to walk. But what I'm saying is there's a physical place soil that bounds the Russian identity. Blood and soil. As yes. Has been Our said. identity is completely global. Just from a fundamental standpoint, the American identity has become global. That's Thank what, you, President Reagan. That and that's, there you that, go. That's what um, that's when Mark Rubio, Marco, Mark, Mark Rubio got up and said there on the Senate floor. He said the American way of life is dependent on on everybody else in the world. 
It's dependent on the rest of the world or a lot of places in the world, a lot of our partners and allies. The American way of life like is dependent Mi on like them. Like Mitsubishi. Yeah, the Russians don't believe that. We don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. We don't believe that. I do not believe that. I think that's where we, we do went not wrong. Believe that. I think that's where we went wrong. Absolutely. And I think when you create that kind of empire, you lose your spiritual border. And when you lose your spiritual border, boomers, you make as much money as you can so you can get breeding rights you don't deserve, and then you get high so you enjoy the sex better. That's my generation. Breeding rights you don't deserve? You don't deserve them. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you were talking about Balmer. <laughs> I mean, the guy looks like, a, you know, I mean, if you don't, breeding rights traditionally, if you go into the wild, mm -hmm. let's get the humanity out of it. Mm -hmm. And if you think about how goofed up this is, it says in the new book, <laughs> a sparrow eats and lives, and how much more are we to God? Why are we so concerned about our next meal or, you know, what we're wearing? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it says the lilies of the field are so beautiful. Even Solomon in his, all of his glory was not as beautiful as these. So we went really into this material thing in a way that is so unbalanced. This is the 501c3 Christian thing, the, the use of the Protestant interpretation of the Bible to create reality because the Bible does give us the power to create. We're, it, it's a creative manual. It's a manual about how to create a reality. We've chosen to create an anti-biblical world instead of the spiritual place with spiritual borders that right. it was supposed to bring for us. Right. An empire is the outward manifestation of our lack of internal spiritual borders. For example, very simple. I'm just thinking about this. Oh, there's all this thing. We have this huge, since 73, my entire life, we're fighting about abortion. And, you know, it just keeps going on. I'm watching online. Donald Trump has said he wants to cut a deal on abortion. He's been very upfront about it. Four months. After four months, no abortion. First four months, hey, it's a woman's right to choose. That's great. Reproductive rights. He's trying to cut a deal. And what's on social media is he's going to ban abortion. But the, I, and the other side is saying that he's a traitor. To I, crazy. Let me just give you a real simple <laughs> solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. Men have a spiritual border. Why are we dependent on women? Take the issue away from them. I have a young man in my life. You have a young man in your life. Yeah, be careful with that one. The the, the Democrats say that we should have uh, we should all have vasectomies. <clears throat> oh, that's nice of them. How about just uh, male birth control? How about just have your consciousness about you? Yeah. How about being a conscious? But it's already a foregone conclusion that that's not that that's not that that's not that's not uh that's not doable. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, Bull but I'm just saying that's what the narrative is. Well, that's the sociologists working with the data and reinforcing the data over generations, mm -hmm. and taking away through that data, turning us into material instead of spiritual. What about restoring that spiritual border as men? What about the culture of men saying, we're taking this issue off the table? Now, we can't take it all off the table. There's always going to be an outlier. But wouldn't that be why you would take a community and make it? You know, I've got a completely different radical view on, on this, so I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. Because I, I think you're still kind of you're still kind of playing in the realm of, of. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you're playing in the realm of. of of the game that that's there's a whole different game being played with that. There's a whole different game being played with sexual reproduction. So, I mean, I, well, I, yes, <clears throat> I, I know where you're heading before we get off the Putin thing. Cause yeah. then we get, yeah, Go I want to yeah, finish go ahead. this. Go ahead. What he, what he let out was a Russian view of history back to 869, which American citizens have, your generation doesn't know what happened in the 60s because the education doesn't want you to know. Don't know what happened in the 80s. Great. Thank you. For so high they forgot what happened in the 90s. <laughs> you know, my point is he has a keen sense of soil, mm -hmm. and he, he's talking about how the Russian people over history were separated one from the other. Just Hitler talked about it the same way. Who separated these peoples so that they were less effective as political groups. That'd be the British. 
Okay, they were very good at this. And he's saying, well, there's a Russian group here and there's a Russian group there. And he goes back and he talks about it so eloquently. Well, that doesn't mean we are Putin's supporters or we're pro-Russian because we're listening to him. We're trying to understand where he's coming from because we don't want to have a nuclear war. Yeah. You know, it's not too much to listen to an antagonist. I was, I was. These people want to die, though. I mean, let's cut, let's cut straight to the punchline. Okay. These people have such a profound sense of self-doubt and self-hatred, self-loathing, regret. They're like Jack guilt, Ruby. Guilt. They want to die. They're like Jack Ruby. They will beg for tyranny and they will accept death. In pursuit of their identity, such as it is. As long as they feel some sense of control in the outcome, it's an acceptable outcome. They want to die. The Mark Levins obviously want war. Mika Brzezinski wants war. Joy Ann Reed wants war. Michael Joe McFall. Biden. Joe, Joe Biden wants war. Uh, Barack Obama, that they want to, he wants war. All the people who are pro, and this is why I say there is no, oh, I don't agree with him on the Ukraine issue, but. There is no fucking but. Now, now there isn't. Either you want war, all-out war, world war, or you don't. And if you think that there's no way around world war, you're as much of a cuck-servative as I could possibly imagine. I mean, there's not a more cuck-servative position than, than being the bitch of the United States military and the federal government and the deep state in their pursuit of is, war. Isn't that the entire thing we're talking about here is that we've built the entire country's house on sand? But, and, and I wanted to say, and I said this once, once, on, uh, once when, I was, uh, when I visited the Blaze, I was, I was down in Dallas for the Big Three and I went to the Blaze to, to do, uh, I think I did Fearless there, but I did a couple other shows too. And, and I made, and this, this, is, this is when I started to get the sense of, of what the Blaze was really all about. No pun intended, not talking about Mark Levin in, in, in this way, but just what was going on on the ground there in the building. When I said that the military industrial complex was the was the prerequisite of of Roe v. Wade and vice versa. Oh, that's a great insight. I say that all the time. I didn't we never talked about that. We no. both came to this yet we're using young women <clears throat> and the abortion issue as a diversion away from what the military is doing and they're the same thing. It's they're a the lack exact of, same thing. They're the spiritual borderless yes. nature of American citizens. Yes. In, in World War II, in World War II, we killed, what, 88 million people in six years. Over 60 years, we've killed 60 million babies in, in the womb. Different time horizon, almost the same outcome, same issue. You know, and, and my point is, um, you know, there's such, a, there's such a crazy cultural conflation here Look, I'm a I'm a pro pro life absolutist. That's just where I'm at with it. However, right? I mean, I mean, you almost can't say you're an absolutist and say however, but but you can because the narrative is so twisted and conflated, right? And 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 part of the narrative is something like um, we think we can govern Christianity and faith and love and love love of God, love of self. We think we can govern govern love of self. That's 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 an order above government. That's an order above fiat. That's about self governance. That's about self governance, right? That's we get the whole that twisted. point of the we whole get that twisted. enterprise. We get that part very very confused, and so to say, you know, now there's a there's and the rightful argument is about protecting a the life, of their life. It's not about your soul or your wrong or right. It's about their actual life, and that is the right argument about abortion. Um. However, on the opposite side, uh, the, the Christian community has been won by result. You can see the Christian faith, the Christian institutions in this country have, by result, by evidence, become a sort of anti-human bastion. They've become a, they've become a bastion of, of, of low reproduction. How can you look at Islam? How can you look at these African communities and whatever pagan religions they believe in and not see that there's more of a human, a pro-human nature to the way that they practice their culture than we do here in America. If America was a Protestant country, if America is a Christian country, 
and we have low birth rates, same as we do in, in Europe, in the Commonwealth, uh, don't our faith institutions have to bear some of the brunt of that responsibility? And part of that responsibility is no, no children out of wedlock. Well, fine, okay. But then we can't let the family courts and the marriage courts become hijacked by people who are anti-human, anti-God, and anti-marriage. And that's what we have done. So as soon as we did that, as soon as it become, becomes obvious now that the family courts, that the, the legal lawfare court, court, same ones going after Donald Trump, have been weaponized against the American people, it's a free-for-all. So don't say men take it off the I'm having as many kids as possible in spite of these transhuman fucks. Fuck you, motherfuckers. Now, now you take that to the fucking court and to the bank. See, because they want to pressure you and bully you. And their, their tactics are subtle. Say, oh, we'll take away your driver's license. I had my driver's license taken away before. They'll, oh, we'll, 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 we'll throw you in jail, black man, if you have a kid. Black people are still having kids. And, and those same cuck conservatives on Fox News are saying, are saying, you're having, why are you having all, remember the, what was the white woman who came into our, our Republican uh, uh, breakfast? Oh, that bitch. And, and said, uh, and said you yeah, black yeah, people, yeah, oh, yeah. fuck these women, and then you leave them. Right, you abandon your children. Abandon your children. And that was her justification she, for abortion. She was, look, that's correct. That was her pro. I, she said directly, I'm pro-abortion because you people, we hear that you people thing. She's <laughs> Margaret we, Sanger. She's Margaret. Oh, do you think Margaret Sanger was a Democrat? I don't know what she was politically. Was she a Democrat or was she a Republican? I don't know. I don't know either. She was a mass murderer. That's for damn sure. What's the difference? She was a racist, a Darwinist. What's the difference? Well, that that's really. I just posted on X today, liberal conservative. What's the difference? I'm going to show it to you. And that's who and who and who's famous for drawing that distinction or that observation, is Alexander Dugan. His book, the, the, the Fourth Political Theory, was a brilliant insight about the scam of liberalism and conservative being two different ideologies. They're two sides of the same coin. Oh, there's po two sides of the post-World War II yes. Democrat An liberal order. Another person who said it was Malcolm X. The wolf, the wolf and the fox. <laughs> yes, that's correct. The wolf and the fox. He said, you know, their approach is different, but their appetite's the same. That's such a great line. <laughs> And it's it's true. I mean, we have a death culture, whether it's by F sixteens or B one bombers and drones and, and forever wars, or drugs, or drugs, or 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 um, you termination know, of, of termination of birth, uh, birth at, in the womb, early it's, death it, of uh, citizens that never learn how to take care of themselves, self governance. Okay, now that's just because we're probably getting close to the end, right? Yeah, about five minutes. Okay, self governance, self governance. What were our founders talking about self governance? They were talking about us self-governing, mm -hmm. creating our own borders, making our own decisions. Can I go back to one second? Go ahead. One second. I got to go back to what I was saying, because I think some of you uh, scripture-based people <clears throat> aren't getting what I'm saying here. Did Moses have a child with Hagar? Oh, the, uh, the founding fathers in, in those books were did, did, prolific. Did Moses have a child with Hagar? Did Moses, did God, not Moses off his own accord, but did, did Sarah not send Hagar and, and, and Hagar's son off? Oh. Abra Abraham. Huh? Abraham. Talking about Abraham. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Abraham. Yes, yeah. you're right. Did Abraham not have a, 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 a child with Hagar? Yes, he did. Did he send, did, were they sent away? His wife. Were they sent away? Sent them away. Was it promised that the nation that would come from them would be great? It was. By God? That's correct. Is that biblical evidence that you don't necessarily need a father in the home to become a great man? I guess or to that, build a great nation? I guess that would be the evidence there. There you go. Scripture, baby. Scripture is just about who's up there preaching. And see, that's another cuck-servative-ass position. Oh, the black community is the way it is because the fathers aren't in the home. No, no, no. The black community is the way it is because the mothers who are left in the home have just as much of a lack of sacred honor as the fathers that would be in the home. And there's plenty of black communities with both parents in the home, but neither parent gives a fuck about the kid. And the same thing is true of white homes. In fact, if you really want to look at who's perpetuated this scam, not to make it a black or white thing, but the heads of the military industrial complex, in fact, today, right now, are mostly white, okay? 
And a lot of them probably had both parents in the home and they still ended up mass murdering fuckheads. Right? So the stories we tell ourselves are, are so, they're so cheap. They're so superficial, but they're so potent. They're so prominent. I can't tell you how prominent the, the black father's absence is the, is the linchpin of why the black, that's not the problem in the black community. The problem in the black community is they have no sense of sacred honor. And to think that sacred honor can only come from your father is to deny the Bible. So you can't wrap yourself in Christianity or Judaism if you think you need a father in the home to be a great man or to build a great community or nation. It says right there. It's like Vladimir Putin, an excuse. It says right there, Abraham had a child with Hagar. They were sent away because it didn't fit the, the- And a great nation will come and from And a great you. nation will come from a, a, a son that obviously was going to be raised without a father in the home. We got to stop. We got to stop with the bullies. We got to cut the shit. We got to cut the DeMarc We got to make do with what we got. And, and what I'm saying is when faced with anti-humanism, transhumanism, the, the, the Yuval Noah Hararis who say if you can't mass produce human beings, then you're going to be obsolete in the next chapter of this industrial revolution. Does it really matter if I got married or not? To have a child? Does it really matter if my child is cult is considered is uh considered culturally a bastard? Is that really what's important? Is that important? If we're talking about the 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 uh the extinction of the species from technocrats and transhumanists? Do I give a sh I don't give a shit what you people think culturally in your little religious uh, uh you know, your little religious cohorts? And we shouldn't give a shit. And I tell all these young men. Do not let them trick you into, th in, into believing that you need to be married before you have a child. That was, that was written at a time where marriage was an entirely different institution. It was an in institution bound by faith, not bound by government. Even that alone, that the government has become the highest authority of the institution of marriage is a blasphemy against the way that it was constructed. It's a blasphemy against our Constitution. Mark Levin. So you can't talk about black on black crime in the absence of black fathers without talking about how the, 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 the law, which he's an expert in, he's an attorney, how the legal system undermined the institution of marriage at a fundamental and ideological place. Hi hijacked it and materialized it. God's the highest authority for our rights, also for marriage, the union of marriage. Both things have been perverted. So now we're at a place where we are faced with having a, a population issue in this country. And I mean a genuine population issue. Not, not oh, well, we're going to get 20 million immigrants across the border illegally. Yeah, okay, that could explode the American population. I'm talking about a genuine population problem. American citizens are no longer having children. And you know what the family courts tell you? If you can't make enough money to provide the type of material lifestyle that we think is the standard, which is obviously inflated. Not only is it literally inflated, but it's, 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 it's uh, theoretically inflated too, you know? If you can't provide a certain material lifestyle for these children, you're better off killing them. Isn't that great? And I'm gonna say, because you rolled on me, I never say anything about marriage. I talked about responsibility and consciousness. Oh, no, no, I wasn't talking about you. I'm just saying what I know, the, that's the sentiment. Right. The sentiment is, is men I, stop having sex with women who, you know, you, you, you're not sure about and you're not be careful who you have children with is the sentiment. Well, in a culture where everybody's fucked three ways to Sunday. You never you shouldn't have children on a if, if you're just going by a material and practical basis, none of you men should get married. None of you men should have children. Because the Marxists and communists have brainwashed, they've hijacked your legal system, they've hijacked your academic institutions, they've hijacked women's minds to thinking that independence is better than companionship. So just by that standard alone, you shouldn't get married. That, that, that sentiment is that women don't need men is powerful. No, no, it's the most profound sentiment in the American culture, Eric, in the postmodern Western culture. It's all over the world. We just heard it this morning, Mika Brzezinski, was talking about the World Economic Forum and this meeting of all these pr prominent women and, and them, protecting, them protecting their, their progress. I mean, that is like the organizing principle of this globalist agenda. It's the, so it's, to say fuck you to them, I'm going to have as many kids as I want to. And I'm not going to let the 501c3 Christians shame me. 
spit on the floor. You people let it happen. So, pardon shots. We got four minutes. Go ahead. Well, I just, you know, we 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 ranged over a broad, a broad, uh, a broad set of subjects today. I I I do want to say in closing, I am not going to allow myself to be branded a traitor or a stooge of Putin because I'm listening. And there was a thing that I saw that's really a big deal. Now they're running clips of Trump uh, talking about he wants to have a good relationship with Xi, he wants to have a good relationship with Putin. You know, what kept us out of uh, nuclear war in 1963 was Kennedy's ability to talk to Khrushchev. Mm. Actually, Reagan helped bring about the demise of the Soviet Union by working with Gorbachev. They actually created a huge transition in world history. Nixon, this one's a little bit more suspect, but Nixon opened up China by having a relationship with Mao. We want our leaders to talk. The fact that our current leadership seems committed to no negotiations would make us into uh, kind of the problem. Kind of the problem. This is the first time in my lifetime where we're in wars and there's not even a cover story for negotiations. Right. First time. Never seen it before. Never seen it before. First time that the United States of America, the shining city on the hill, is not at least having the pretext. Of peace. Of peace. <laughs> right. <laughs> Professor Penn, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been another Hebrews episode. I think we, may, we might have to uh, extend the Please Call Me Crazy weekly schedule to uh to four episodes a week well if i mean if we start doing that we might as well just put the hebrews channel up you, it, we what? could just we could just put the hebrews channel up and and just do a we'll do hebrews once a week to start um we'll decide if it's next week or the, or the week after that for the uh the premiere um but thanks for tuning in for another episode of hebrews thanks for being here the professor pin podcast if you're not familiar or subscribed please like and subscribe you can f- follow me on x at, prof, f- at prof 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 pen podcast because we need to get out you don't there. have to say the exact handle if you if you look up professor pin it'll be there it'll be there okay it'll, it'll be there on all on all platforms okay um so yeah find them on social media getter as well uh you're on getter i don't know if you're real active on getter but you're on getter um, so Professor Penn, ladies and gentlemen, the great Professor Penn, this is Hebros. We appreciate your listenership and viewership tonight and in the future. Uh, the fight continues. Don't die a jerk off. And as always, Godspeed.